Welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments. In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the possession of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Hey folks, welcome to this unique video. Today I'm going to perform a jettison and make an example out of someone and to hopefully curb any future misunderstanding about what I mean by following the terms and conditions of this vessel construct, this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. If you choose to comment here, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you would follow. Just like if you walk into someone's house, you take your shoes off, maybe take your hat off, you don't walk in naked, maybe you don't use cuss words, you know what I mean? You, you honor the terms and conditions and the rules of the vessel you're a guest of and you make yourself aware of those things because if you don't if you think you can just go anywhere and say whatever you want and do whatever you want folks that's inconsiderate it's rude it's bullyish behavior contract is all about joinder honor humility consent consent is contract you can't have a contract without consent okay now you do participate with the honor and the grace within the bounds of the psychology of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar and the individual that I'm going to be addressing in this video I have given wow boatloads of grace however they have chosen to not uh, acknowledge that or observe that and so hence this video so if you look here here are the guidelines any one of you out there can see this if you go into the comments field and you want to type a comment you will see some little box pop up or a link available to you saying something like review community guidelines or community guidelines something you click on that, you will see this. It says, welcome to my YouTube vessel. Please use basic etiquette. Number one, no gossip, conspiracy theories, belief systems, trolling. Two, no foul language, rudeness, cussing, etc. Three, do not tell others what to do. Do not make it personal. The individual I'm going to be addressing in this particular video has repeatedly violated rules one and three either they didn't read the terms and the conditions or they don't give a shit all right and if it's the latter I don't want anything to do with this person and so I have no problem throwing them overboard if it's the first one then shame on them because they've been here for a long time they've been watching my videos and learning from me for a long time They've even said, oh, I'm serious about the grammar. I'm going to take a workshop at least two or three times. And then, of course, they never do. They never do. Uh, so let's get into it. So it kind of started with this comment right here from Pi314, whose name is colon Kenneth hyphen Wayne colon space Cowtan. That is their correct name. But they said, perhaps... They were being cheeky as curing cancer are non-fact-based words. 
Now what they're referring to is a very old video of mine, a Parse video. It's at least five years old. I'm pretty sure five years ago I published a video that this individual is referring to where I Parse the words cure and cancer. Now think of that sentence, folks. Perhaps they were being cheeky as cure and cancer are non-fact-based words. That is 100% incorrect. That is 100% wrong. Cure and cancer are both fact-based. Why are they not facts? Because they don't have positionals and lodials in front of them, positioning them with correctness. But they are based on facts. If you study the grammar and you learn about the rules of parse, you will find that you can credential tangibility and non-tangibility by looking the words up, which Pi314 probably hasn't, my, I'm guessing. You'll find that the earliest nativity root meanings of those words in an etymology dictionary are tangible. So if you look a word up and the earliest nativity root meaning is tangible, then you would syntax the word as tangible. You would credential the word as tangible, i.e. based on a fact. It's not a fact because it doesn't have a positional lodial phrase in front of it. Okay, so it's not a fact, but it's based on a fact. So them saying is based is non-fact based words is 100% wrong, 100% incorrect. 100% incorrect. So they're basing their entire premise on something that is wrong. So everything they say after is based of, is predicated upon this incorrect statement. So then they say they are of unknown and recent origins to color the thinking of many minds and now they are presuming and assuming why or or I mean the purpose of those two words how would they possibly know that that's the purpose of the words there's no way to credential that and then they give their name and then they said I of course do not contract with these words as I'm a master health scientist so my response is actually if you are speaking in terms of correct sentence structure both cure and cancer are very tangible. One word, one meaning. Also, I claim to be a master of correct sentence structure, meaning I have many years of successful teaching under my belt. A public YouTube channel with 900-ish videos and successful students. To claim to be a master of health science, or as you put it, master health scientist, is quite a claim to be making. Where would I find proof of this? My proof is in the public and easily accessible. Could you please share your proof? Thank you. It's my own personal curiosity, nothing to do with grammar, but everything to do with continuance of the evidence. Thank you. So they're claiming to be a master health scientist. I don't know about you folks, but I just don't take someone at their word. I need proof. I need somewhere to go to be able to prove what it is they're saying. The proof of the claim is with the claimant. So what they chose to do in response to that is to not even address the grammar. Not even address anything I said about the grammar. Folks, is this a grammar channel? Is this, is this a channel about grammar? Is there a reason I keep trying to focus in on the grammar? <laughs> yes, I'm being cheeky. And yes, I'm making light of the situation because this individual has totally veered off the path. And now they're bringing something into it that has nothing to do with anything, at least not to do with the grammar. Now, I did say up here, I said, it's my personal curiosity, nothing to do with the grammar. I am the master of this channel, so I'm directing the conversation as the master of the channel and Pi314 being the guest, if you're going to come on here making claims, if you're going to come on here kind of ignoring the terms and conditions, we're in the gray area right now and I'm utilizing grace, then I'm going to ask you to prove your claim. Where's the proof? But instead of doing that, instead of addressing the grammatical issues at the beginning of my response or addressing the credentialing, at the, last, at the last bit of my comment, they say, nothing cures. Cancer is a recent made-up name. 
One should never drink the most poisonous thing, coffee. What in Sam's hell does coffee have to do with grammar or anything or credentialing this guy as a master health scientist? Do you see this word, should? One should never drink the most poisonous thing. What's rule number three say? Do not tell others what to do. Do not make it personal. Do not tell others what to do. Yet here we are. One should never drink the most poisonous thing. All right. So then I move on to say, thank you for sharing your opinion, which holds no value here because you've completely ignored my request for credentialing yourself, Master Health Scientist. And folks such as yourself, you've done this in the past, always telling others what they should or shouldn't do. One should never drink the most poisonous thing. Either you didn't read the terms and conditions of this comments field or you lack consideration or both. Perhaps you think you know a lot about stuff normal folks such as myself know nothing about. Everyone knows that one sip of coffee will kill you and send you to hell for internal damnation. That's why most folks I know drink it and live to a ripe old age. You really are hilarious. Now, now I'm going into absurdity because as I said at the, at the beginning of every comments video, the energy you bring is the energy I'm going to return to you. Rule one, rule equal. They have brought the energy of absurdity here. And so I'm returning it. I'm being extremely sarcastic. So what happened next? After I made that comments video up there, you see, where I gave Kuliana to their comments that we just read together, they said this. For the gratitude, thanks for the reminder of the mindset. I shall respond with the care of more humility. So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe this individual, maybe there is hope for this individual. But those hopes were very soon dashed. So then they got their fingers a tapping on the keys and left lengthily, uh, chapter length responses. To what I said. For the claimant's knowledge of the health principles is with the claim of the study and of the practice. With the gain of the health knowledge with 38 years of the consideration and cogitation with the health knowledge pursuit by the Kenneth Wayne Cowtan. All right, so since this is a grammar channel, which maybe Kenneth isn't not aware of that, I don't know. Maybe they don't accept it. Maybe they don't cognize it. Let's take a look at this sentence right off the bat. All right. So you have the cause, which is the claimant's knowledge. What's the claimant's knowledge concerned with? The, the health principles. All right. Singular verb is, what's possessing the health principles? The claim. What's the claim concerned with? It's a claim of study and practice. So they're, they're not a master. They just practice. They're practicing. They're practicing. In the fiction, you would say, you know, an amateur goes to practice they practice, but, you know, baseball or whatever, but they're not professionals. They're practicers, like doctors practice medicine. So what is possessing the practice? The gain. What's the gain concerned with? Health knowledge. All right, so we don't have a hyphen in there, so that throws everything into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So what is possessing health knowledge? With the honor and the grace, we'll skip over that. 38 hyphen years. What's that concerned with? Consideration, cogitation. So they've been considering something for 38 years. They've been cogitating something for 38 years. What's possessing that? Health knowledge pursuit. Okay. So there we have a particle of negation in our facts. A P-U-R is a particle of negation. It means no. So their health knowledge no suit. And then the authority is Kenneth Wayne. So Kenneth Wayne is the authority of the no health knowledge. Gotcha. All right. Cheekiness aside, the positional sequencing is A-OK. -okay, 100% correct. The conveyance is not. It's very muddy. There are what I would perceive to be careless errors in here. Particles, negation, facts, 
missing punctuation. So let's move on to the meat of the matter where they translate or attempt to translate what they're saying. They say, I understand your doubt, Jason. I read my first book on fasting when I was 19. I have studied 100,000 pages of information and listened to countless hours of health discussions, in particular, Anthony Robbins Living Health with Dr. Robert Young. The Life Science Health System course is 2,300 pages, which I have validated for over 20 years. I have correct knowledge of health principles. Again, there is no proof of this, of what he's saying. He's saying what he's done. Okay, how can you possibly prove that you've read 100,000 pages? Did you keep a logbook and write down one, two, three, four, bloop, five, one, two, three, four, bloop, five? How can you possibly certify that? I guess we just have to take his word for it, huh? Right? Is that what he's used to people doing, taking his word for stuff? So we have Anthony Robbins Living Health with Dr. Robert Young. So these are all fiction doctors, right? Now that is a certification. That is not to discredit folks who went to school to be a doctor. I'm not doing that at all. What I'm saying is that's fiction doctors, okay? So he has validated for over 20 years. Validated what? 2,300 pages. Okay, sure. Where's your proof, though? I have validated correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I have 900-ish videos in the public for people to see. That's my proof. My evidence is here for you to plainly see. Anybody can access it. Where's your proof, bro? Where is it? Where can I access it? Where's your peer-reviewed papers if you're a scientist? Sci don't scientists write peer-reviewed papers? Where's it at? Is it available to the public? What's going on? Is it written in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun? I'm guessing it is. Disease is not normal. Disease means no ease. I would say that no ease is pretty common amongst us peasants and peons and non-scientific folks. Okay? As part of life, you have ease and you have no ease, disease. It's a balance. Okay? Something comes up and causes you disease. Now you find a solution so you can get back to the ease. It's simple, right? Disease is not normal and need not exist. You have beliefs that are common dogma and simply not true. So here is the issue, folks. The biggest, one of the biggest issues. He's telling me what I have. He's making a claim for me. He thinks he knows. He's being presumptive and assumptive. He's making assumptions about me. That is a trespass. That is fiction system bullshit. I would never tell someone else something like this. And this is proof. This is evidence. And I'm offering this to you, dear viewer, as a continuance of the evidence as why this guy does not have closure on the grammar and probably will not get any closure on it anytime soon because they put themselves in a they. From my perception, from my view, as a tutor of correct sentence structure for six years, they are putting themselves in a, a position that violates rule one, rule equal. They are saying that I have beliefs that are common dog dogma and simply not true. How do they know that? How do they know what my no love is? Belief is no contract, by the way. I don't participate with that word in correct sentence structure because it is no contract. It means no love. And this guy uses it over and over again, and they're being presumptive of something. It was a very long journey for me to have mastery of this subject. Again, just wants us to take his word for it. I, of course, am disappointed in your lack of humility, given you have just given a test on the importance of it. Where in any of my kuleana have I lacked humility? In order for humility to exist or be cultivated, there must be a reason for it. You have given no proof of anything. You've just spoken and given words. You've given me no sources. You've given me nothing to look at, no credentialing. Hell, 
I mean, if you had a fiction system degree from college, that would be part of a continuance of the evidence, but you have showed me nothing. I, on the other hand, have tons of proof on my YouTube channel, 900-ish videos. And if that's not enough, I can direct you, in the confidential, of course, but I can direct you to students that can show you they have closure on the grammar, something you do not have. This is a grammar channel, by the way. So I've disappointed them. Aww. It breaks my heart to disappoint anybody. If I gave a shit what someone like this thought, then I'd probably be off crying in a corner with a box of Kleenex. You have just given a test on the importance of it. Nevertheless, I understand what I claim will seem absurd. We have been greatly hoodwinked. Oh, so now they're trying to basically smooth things over, maybe. Yes, what you claim is absurd because you offer no proof at all. Nothing. So it is observed. And now they say we have been greatly hoodwinked. Who's we? You got a mouse in your pocket? You, got, you talk about the voices in your head, bro? Or are you making a claim for others? Which, again, is incorrect psychology. It's a trespass. But they are speaking for all of us. And it's a habit that they continue to indulge in, apparently, even though it goes against the terms and conditions of this comments field. They go on to say, I suggest a read of Caffeine Blues if you would like to know more about the poison. Look, folks, this has absolute, absolutely nothing to do with what we were talking about. This guy has completely misdirected the conversation to caffeine. It went from Master Health Scientist, well, okay, it went from grammar, talking about grammar curing cancer, which I called them out saying they were wrong. Curing cancer are tangible contract. They didn't have anything really to say about that. But now they want to start talking about caffeine. And now they're going into a long treatise that has nothing to do with the grammar and everything to do with them promoting their own personal belief systems. Folks, it's right frickin' there. Maybe Kenneth has a, a reading disability. I don't know. I don't know. If you would like to know more about that poison, here I quote T.C. Fry, the ability of the carefully depraved organism to tolerate large doses of poisons and the fact of everyday experience that the use of poisons by the physiologically depraved, instead of producing immediate symptoms of poisoning, results in the appearance and feeling of well-being, has led even intelligent people to stoutly deny the poisonous character of many poisons in habitual use. Tobacco, opium, alcohol, arsenic, coffee, and tea may be freely and habitually used without producing immediate death or any of the distressing symptoms that indicate acute poisoning. But on the contrary, so far as the feelings and actions of the users are concerned, they act as grateful cordials. Men and women are deceived by them. Folks, do you know anyone in your biosphere that stoutly deny the poisonous character of tobacco, opium, alcohol, arsenic, coffee, or tea? Does anybody deny that character? Okay. You see what I'm saying? What did uh, Samuel Clemens said? Moderation in all things, including moderation. Anyone can choose to do what they want to do. All right? They can. So if Kenneth chooses not to drink coffee, not to use tobacco, not to use alcohol, so on and so forth. That's his choice. He's more than welcome to choose those things. Anyone on earth can do whatever they want to do with their own volition, as long as they're not harming or putting others in danger. It's very simple. And this goes back to the correct sentence structure psychology. Making judgments upon others 
and telling them what they should or shouldn't do is a trespass. What in the hell does this have to do with learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? Kenneth. So this brings me to the conclusion that Kenneth is not here to learn correct sentence structure. They're here to promulgate their own belief system. They're here to argue and mitigate. They're here to violate the terms and conditions of this channel because they continue to do so. You want to hear how Kenneth responded? Let's see. Remember, folks, they said this. For the gratitude, thanks for the reminder of the mindset. I shall respond with the care of more humility. Remember, they said that. Now get a load of this. They said, I have no idea what you are talking about now. It will be difficult to comprehend a true knowledge of health principles given the brainwashing most are under. I do not care about self-promotion. Why do infer such absurd thought? I have knowledge and share to those that have the capacity to understand. I thought you might be able to. Given some humility, I could be wrong. So again, they're placing themselves above where I am. I lack the capacity to understand his knowledge. <laughs> and if I gain a little humility, maybe I will understand why this guy continues to maliciously violate the terms and conditions of this channel, why he continues to shamelessly self-promote himself as a master health scientist and his interesting ideas about caffeine and his 38 years of 100,000 pages of whatever the hell he's been filling his head with. But I can tell you, with all that, you know, those pages and all that now space spent doing all that, it's no wonder he can't learn correct sentence structure or hasn't learned it so far. There's no room for it. Uh, also, with my own perception and my own uh, cognition, the, his ego has probably taken a lot of that up too. Now, again, some folks might say that about me. They might say that I'm being harsh and that I'm being egotistical. My question to those folks is, how so? I have provided, continued to the evidence of the terms and conditions of this channel, comments field. I have provided evidence that I'm a master of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, which just means that I know how to use it and can teach it to others and explain it very easily to others in a live setting. I, I've shown this through the evidence of the 900-ish videos. And this guy has shown no evidence of his knowledge level, given no sources, given no continuance of the evidence, and continues to pass judgment, telling others what they should or shouldn't do, talking about how much experience and knowledge and study he has. Bro, if you want to share this knowledge, do it on your YouTube channel. Go start making videos. Maybe in a couple years, maybe in six years, you'll have 900 videos about your master health principles. And you'll have your own little community where you can do whatever you want. But I can pretty much guarantee you one thing that won't be a part of that is correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And that's where I'm talking about humility comes in. But then this guy isn't even correct. So there is no correctness or humility in what they're doing by my perception as a guest aboard this vessel. And so therefore they are no longer a guest aboard this vessel. I have jettisoned them. I will not even entertain any type of email communication from them anymore because I choose to concentrate on folks that are humble and cultivate humility and want to learn the grammar. I'm not really interested in what folks do in their own personal time. I'm not really interested in what folks are drinking or, or whatever they're doing. As long as they're not hurting me, I don't care what they're doing because it's a choice, whatever it is they're doing.
It's a choice. Of course, I care about loved ones, and those are the folks that I would concentrate on in that scenario. But this isn't about that. This is about grammar, folks. It's about grammar, and I hope that is the lesson that you take away from this video. If you come to this channel, it is about grammar. If you continuously and maliciously deviate from that and talk about shit that has nothing to do with the grammar or even anything to do with the original conversation, then I'm going to jettison you. You're, you're going to be gone. And you can go yap yap to somebody else. All right. Thanks for watching.